All right, today I'm going to go over um, and just try to simplify um, a little bit about rocker switches and relays and things and the types and uh, what can save you time and money when you're adding all those things to your machines. Um, a lot of you have seen that I have added, uh, I'm now adding as we speak, and I'll have a video coming on my commander. I'm also adding a fuse block to it as well. Those things are dirt cheap on Amazon. I want to say 12 to $18 tops for six uh, zones on it. So easy to install. They ensure, you know, you've you've seen the videos on YouTube of guys' rides just catching fire for no reason. Sometimes it's gas-related, but sometimes it's electrical. Because guys are going out there and saying, well, I don't need this and I don't need that. I, I just wanted to give you a quick lesson on that. Uh, uh, first off, why do we need a relay? And what is a relay? Relay is simply a bigger switch that will conduct more current. Um, that allows you to use uh, higher voltages. It's going to have, um, you know, like a 14, 12, 10 gauge wire coming out of it uh, so that it'll handle the load of whatever power is pushing through it. If we used a simple switch, uh, for instance, if you can see this, it's rated at 20 amps. That's pretty high. Most of these are. You could probably get away with that possibly as long as you had an inline fuse with a, a, a small light bar, but why take the chance? Relays are easy to install, they're cheap, you can just replace, as you all know, the relay if it goes bad, put them in a place uh, where you don't get a lot of water on them, you know, that way with them so that the water goes off and down and doesn't go into them and ruin them. They're not waterproof, most of them aren't, even though these manufacturers sell these kits for side-by-sides. So what do they do? Simply put, they connect heavier currents to your batteries. They typically have an inline fuse before they get to the relay. So then the relay goes out to you, whatever you want to put, a horn, your lights, uh, you name it, winches, and, and of course they have their own relays. But the point is, now you can carry higher currents and switch them on and off. Notice the size and gauge of the wires for the actual switch itself. Very small. Uh, these are probably, I'm going to guess them at uh, anywhere from 20 to 23 gauge. They don't have to be thick because all they are is they use electrical current to force a switch to close in, into this unit and allow heavy electricity to come through it or heavy amps to go through uh, there because amperage is what burns it up. So what happens is if you've got too skinny of wires, never, I always overdo my wiring, never underdo. When you draw too many amps through a skinny wire, thin wire, uh, high, light gauge wire, it continues to heat up. The longer you have your run, the more heat you're going to generate. And that's what happens. These things catch on fire. Now put them anywhere near your, your exhaust add the additional heat coming, like on Commanders and Mavericks and all those where your, your motor's in the middle and you're running wires down there above it, combination of the two could catch on fire pretty quickly. And so that's, that's the importance of a relay in there. Use it for everything if I were you. These things are so cheap. You can get them for as cheap as 8 bucks online um, for ones that will do smaller stuff. If you're running these heavy-duty... Um, 1200, 1800 watt light bars, 2200s. I'm seeing all kinds of crazy ones out there these days. You want to make sure you get heavy duty, heavy gauge for that. So that's the scoop on those. Let's talk about switches themselves. Most rocker switches are typically a 20 amp switch. They'll handle a lot. You see the smaller ones. Uh, this happens to be a waterproof unit. I think this one's rated at 5 amps. You can barely see it. Uh, but it is rated for five. Some of these are rated for as little as one and a half amps. So you got to be careful with these switches. They will also also short out, burn up, whatever the case may be. Uh, this one I'm going to use for um, heated seats. Uh, that's another video coming up. I'm putting heated seats in my X3 and uh, maybe in my Commander 2, even though I live in Houston, we don't have much winters, but sure is nice to have a warm butt for about 
Uh, per unit, I'm guessing probably 40, 50 bucks per unit. And you have heated seats, push a button, and you stay warm during the winter. Can't believe a lot of you guys up north haven't done that already. I'll show you that soon, as soon as those come in. They're on their way from China. So, different types of switches. Uh, I've got something on the computer here to show you. You, you. There's all kinds of rockers, but most of us end up getting this typical rocker here. Um, these rockers here, you see a lot of them. Uh, out there. I try to be consistent with mine. The look of these rockers I don't like as much. So I like rockers like this. This is the latest one I got from my wiper and my washer. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So um, I like to be consistent. If you want to change colors and what have you, great. Uh, some of you look back on my previous video where I redid my uh, uh, my uh, X3 dash to include stereo moved my start switch and put in a red. There's one there, but mine actually says uh, engine start or I forget what it says ignition, something like that. So uh, push to start or something like that in red. And so you can shop around, you can find these different switches and be consistent with them. And uh, me, I, I'm not that big of a redneck, so you're not going to see the naked girl crap on my stuff. Um, <laughs> whatever. So, let's talk about how to make the most use out of these switches. So, we go trying to find as much dash space as possible because we need to turn our, our front lights on, then our back lights on, and then our side lights on, and then our running lights on, um, and what have you. Or, when we have these huge light bars, if you've ever followed behind somebody, they're begging you to turn your light off and go to normal lighting. So, how do you capitalize and try to get the most out of your switches? You know, your average switch runs you about, I think, about eight, nine bucks. Catch it right. Amazon, um, and uh, on uh, eBay, and what have you, on some of these other sites. Um, but, when you get a dual purpose switch, i.e. this one, um, for instance, here's your type of switches. There may be another couple of them, but and there may even be, uh, but your typical one is a two position switch on and off. I don't want to have one here to show you. I've got one somewhere in one of my boxes, but typically it goes on and off, right? And so that's going to allow you to put maybe one thing on it. You could probably wire up two things on it as long as you have one of these connected to those other ones, you're going to be safer. You start running too many units through one switch, you're going to burn it up, and you're going to cause some, uh, some electrical issues in your unit and possibly a fire. So there's that. And then you have an off momentary on. And um, I have one of those. Can't find it right now. I think I've got it in storage. I've been working on units at home and in storage. So momentary on is basically on, and it comes back to off again. It's momentary. It does not stay on like this. It comes back and automatically goes back off again by itself, right? So there's your typical momentary on. What would you use that for? Meh, windshield wiper, horn, right? And some of these I have mine that say horn on it, but I'm switching my horns, as some of you have seen in my other videos, to buttons on my steering wheel. But I have these types of switches that say horn on them, nice, lit up. And you just momentary horn, and you're on. And so those work out good. But then here's when we come into saving space on our dash, saving switches. And that's an on, off, on switch. And that's a switch like this, a switch like this, which um, this is actually not. This is a on, off, on. So in the middle position, you're off. Let's say you don't use your front and your lights, back lights all the time, your light bars. So why not take one switch and say, okay, when I'm on in the front, um, I'm going to push it up, and now I have the front lights on. If I want to go in the back, I'm going to push it back, and I've got the back lights on. In the middle, they're both off. All right, nothing lights up uh, in these units. And so that's a, that's a nice switch, too, to be able to utilize two or three different functions that you don't need at the same time in your rig, right? Um, here's another solution. So I was talking earlier about running light bars 
and additional light bars. So some of us have, and I'm adding them now to mine. I've had a light bar on front, but I'm adding now that I ride behind other people. I'm not, I'm not in the lead anymore. There's some guys that know how to take these serious trails and serious climbs better than me at night. So I ride behind them. So I still need more light than what my headlights have put out. So I'm putting a couple of uh, smaller light bars on. I got a 12 inch coming uh, to go on my. Uh, uh, deal. I may put a second one on, but the point is, what if we didn't have one switch for that, one switch for a big light bar, one switch for this? What if we had what we call an off-on-on on bar, i.e. back position is fully off. You notice there's a lot more poles in here. First position would turn on your running lights, uh, would turn on maybe your uh, chaser lights or what have you, or turn on your front lights. Second position turns that light bar on because again we're using one of these so you don't have to worry about drawing too much amperage out of these things because uh, you draw very little amperage uh, when you use a relay. So now you can go off on on and now you have your light bar going on click it back one click you still have your running lights on or your front lights on so you get you get the idea here uh, next one on the list is an on off momentary on and i'm still looking for one of those that say wiper washer because i sure would like to have my wiper goes on down here um, but then i need my washer motor to go uh, because I'm putting um, DIY on the cheap, less than $100, wiper and washer systems on both my Commander and my Maverick here in the next couple of months. And so I've already bought the parts for the X3. I'm going to try it out first. If it works out. But wouldn't it be nice to have a momentary on up here that kicks back? So it's just like uh, doing your washers in your truck, right? They're on, and then you can push them again, and they're momentary on. So I would love to have actually an off, on, momentary on for my washers that kicks back into the wipers going back up to that. So that's the scoop on a lot of these switches. And don't be afraid. I mean, some of them buy these expensive kits and re uh, systems and what have you. These switches aren't hard to put in. They're very simple. They pop in. Each one may have a different wiring diagram. So when you buy your switch, just make sure you have access to the wiring positions. So there, it looks complex, but really it truly really is a ground. Typically that one's a ground. It may have power in, and then it may have a switch on, and this is the second switch. And then it may have for the lights to go on, and you'll uh, transfer over to that. If you, some people do want the lights on the, the units to glow, some people don't. So that's what the extra poles are for. So when you get a seven pole unit, you're going to have a lot more functionality out of that with your lights on. So that light may be on uh, as you turn on your evening lights. That light will come on as you actually use the switch. So that type of stuff. So that's the scoop on switches. Um, what's coming up uh, soon? Uh, in past videos, you've heard me talk about the windshield wipers and what have you. Next up, um, I'm finishing up my Commander Radio in the switch to the rear backup light that will go in and on my shift knob. That's coming up. The uh, heated seats, that's coming up. And so do me a favor and subscribe. Do me a favor and like and uh, my channel and what have you. The more people I got, I'm hoping soon, as I, if I keep posting these how-tos on the cheap to really save guys money, that maybe uh, maybe the guys at uh, YouTube will finally start allowing me to, to uh, get some money uh, from some ads on there. They have just recently changed their criteria from what I heard on another post is it's now like a thousand people have to be viewing you uh, in there. Thank you for watching. Uh, anything else that uh, you see on my rigs you want me to explain, just give me some comments on it. Again, like me, subscribe to me. I sure appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Have a good day.